I'm Ann Barksdale and I'm a licensed professional counselor. And what that means is I have an undergrad in psychology and went and got a master's in psychology so that I can spend my days helping others. Um, a typical day starts um, very early and I check my schedule, I see who my clients are. Then I check paperwork. I try not to see clients except in the afternoons because I do see clients in the evenings and on the weekends. Typically the first time I see a client we're going to spend a little over an hour. And um, right now the sessions are averaging about five. I see any, any age bracket from three to geriatrics and I do couples counseling as well as family counseling which is kind of, it's a beast of a different kind. You can have the entire family in here rocking and rolling. This is the first session. We're going to start um, briefly. They're going to tell me why they're here. What brought them in the door? Uh, this is most often the worst day of their lives. And it's very difficult. It's kind of a cross between going to the office and going to the doctor when you get here. So we try to break that um, stigma and that ice. There's a, a lot of paperwork that starts that first session. You've got consents to treat and bill of rights and then um, such things as uh, an agreement to pay. Um, we're in this to earn living. Then we, we start to find out what brought them in. What really brought you in. Now what they tell you is usually not the underlying problem but it's going to get them rolling. Um, from there I typically do not develop the treatment plan the first time. Some clients, some clinicians do. I like to let the client think about it, come back with me. Um, I do have a secure email where they can contact me and say, this is really what I think is bothering me. The second visit then we will develop the treatment plan. And this is our, this is our bones, this is the skeleton of what we're going to work from. We're going to outline what's the problem. Um, what has possibly not been working, what they're willing to do, and how we're going to do it. We're going to try to measure when we know things are working. We revisit this quite frequently because this is the plan from which we're working. As a reality therapist, I'm always looking to see what behaviors they're endorsing, what need are they feeling, and how how the behaviors they're exhibiting are not filling needs. Then we really get down to, to therapy and that's where we will develop. I like homework. I like to send them home with things that they, they do. It's not just a 50 minute billable session. They, they need to be, they've got to be replacing behaviors so they've got to be coming up with behaviors. Um, I like music therapy. I like for them to uh, watch different movies. The more senses uh, of the five that we can bring on board, the quicker we're going to see improvement. I started out when I have an undergrad in psychology. Then I went on to a master's in counseling and psychology. And after that, I did enter a, a program in general psychology to obtain a PhD, and I'm in research in that. Um, it's not necessarily required that you have the undergrad in psychology. I encourage it uh, simply because it's just going to give you that leg up in, in your master's. But I had colleagues that uh, one in particular came to mind. She had an English degree and taught then went back in, uh, in a master's program. I'm a licensed professional counselor and there are all forms in, in areas and branches, branches of counseling. So I encourage everybody when we have this conversation to uh, explore them. Unfortunately it's not a profession that you can shadow uh, someone because you're breaching confidentiality. But you can talk to them and you can talk to them about what they did, what they, how they got to where they are, what's the ramifications of their licensure. Um, and, t and contact the, uh, it's literally like in this state, it's the uh, licensure board and say, I'm interested in this field. What, what information can you direct me to? <clears throat> 
For me, um, I knew I wanted to one day have a private practice, so I did need the LPC because it, it does afford me the privilege of being pri uh, in a private practice. I started out in agency work, and if that is something that you want to stay in, then explore your state options, your agency options, because all of them have different levels of licensure, different levels of practice. Uh, I have worked inpatient as well as uh, in private practice, and I have done public mental health. To um, get to this stage, I attended a, a college that was what's called KCREPT approved. That's significant in, in the LPC world because all of our classes must be approved by this agency. And um, we have a 60 hour master's and you're going to have no less than two internships. I had two practicums and two internships during this time. And I want to stop and kind of concentrate on the internship for a moment because they're very important in what you're going to get out of it. You can find internships that will pay you and I'm not saying that's not your best option. I'm saying look into it. Are they going to further where you want to be when you're done. When you graduate, you got that diploma, did they help you to get to where you are? Uh, oftentimes they are going to be very limited and you want to make sure you're going to have uh, exposure to a broad base uh, population so that you, you, know, you do encounter different types of problems. Um, it's good that they have a broad expanse of the kinds of therapies utilized you want to make sure they're going to bring you on board with paperwork. It can be the bane of your existence. And a good background, a real concrete understanding of what needs to be in those notes can keep you out of court. Um, the good things in this job, like for me right now, sitting in this uh, private office, is I'm afforded the privilege of basically seeing my clients when I want. This affords me my mornings off. Um, I'm an online instructor, so I'm in my classrooms. I'm in the office in the afternoon. It also affords me the privilege to see the clients uh, that I think I can help best. Um, so far, I really haven't found anybody that I felt I needed to refer. But um, that gives you a lot of freedom. I like to run on the beach, and I schedule my clients around my run. So, with that said, take off the rose glasses and let's look at the bad side. Um, there is some worse days. Your clients are coming to you on the worst days of their lives. They've had the most tragic things happen. Um, some of these people will tell you stories that will break your heart. And in your training, you'll learn that you're supposed to sit motionless, but you're human and you really just can't. You're going to be touched by them. Um, one of the worst things is the, uh, the paperwork. You got a tremendous amount of paperwork and it must always be correct. Uh, you walk a fine line between what you put in there and what might show up in court. And if you're in private practice like me, you deal with insurance companies. And while they are, I have found quite gracious, they're very busy and it's not uncommon for it to be two weeks before they get back to you. So those are some of the bad things. Um, one of the worst things, and I think I'd be amiss if I didn't tell you this, um, one of the populations I enjoy working with is you're severely depressed, chronically mentally ill, and the paranoid schizophrenic, and you can lose a patient. And that I have found uh, in colleagues and in interns has been a very traumatic moment. My advice is to research, research, and research, and, and explore. It's a, a profession that is a little difficult to um, possibly actually sit in on, but you can, um, you can find jobs in the area, you can volunteer in the area, and explore your educational options. I um, went the whole psychology route. That's not necessarily required, but 
you need to know when you start what are going to be the educational requirements if I want to do this here. Make sure that you're on track. Explore in your undergrad, if I take this, can I take this other one and then be qualified for this? Always be aware. Um, be open to classes. Be open to what they will bring to the table. They may change your life. Um, looking at your masters, it's, um, we have a tendency to apply to the closest, but don't limit yourself. Explore all the options. You have land-based, um, online, and then you have combinations. And this can make the difference in whether you can complete your education. If licensure is the uh, goal, look and see what is the, um, what's the requirements for this licensure. I had to attend KCREP approved schools. If that's required, then you're going to need to find one. Go to, um, I go to a lot of workshops, I go to seminars, you'll have, like we have a state conference, go to it. You can go and attend as a student and uh, get on board. Somebody like me will, will latch on to you and show you the ropes. Ask lots of questions, just ask lots of questions.